Someone on our subreddit asked us to review the Philips 3000i, as it was recommended as the best air purifier in the UK by Witch Magazine. So this review's for you, Poo Sticks. Today we're going to be reviewing this Philips 3000i. It's available in the UK and Europe, and you've probably heard of the Philips name before. Interestingly, when I was researching for this review, I found out that the domestic appliance business of Philips had actually been sold to a private equity firm in 2021. And this company is now called Versuni. Now Versuni makes these products, but has the license to use the Philips name. The Philips 3000i is the most powerful unit in the series. We also have the Philips 2000i, which looks the same, but is slightly cheaper and less powerful. If you don't want to watch my full review, here are the four things I like about this device and the four things I don't. So the first one is performance. It managed to remove all PM1 pollutants in 18 minutes. It also had great build quality. So the device itself seems well made, the filter itself, same. I also like some of the design features. So you've got this fabric at the top of the device, similar to what we see in Blue Air. It really does make it stand out to other devices in the sector. And finally, the app itself installed easily, it's good looking and does what it needs to do. So what I don't like, the first one at its RRP, it doesn't offer great value for the air cleaning performance that you get. The pre-filter is actually attached to the filter. So when you have to regularly clean this, it just makes it more difficult compared to devices where you can remove the pre-filter. Onto the filter itself, it's a bonded filter. So this means that if the activated carbon runs out, you have to throw the entire filter away. And the final thing is Philips recommends that you need to change the filter every three years. But in my opinion, that is just far too long. Right, let's jump into the full review. As with all the air purifiers we review here at House Fresh, we bought this device with our own money. It has an RRP of £450, but when I was putting this review together, it was available on Amazon.co.uk for £349.17. Once I knew I wanted to do a review for this device, I noticed that the price seemed to change fairly regularly. So I kept checking in on Amazon.co.uk to see if I could snag a bargain, and I managed to get it for £269. If you've seen my reviews before, you know that the first thing I like to do is go over to the Energy Star website to see if a KDAR score exists for this device. Now sadly there wasn't a KDAR score for the Philips 3000i so we'll have to go off the number that Philips gives on their website. So they mentioned that this device has a KDAR of 520 M3H, which equates to 306 CFM. They also mentioned that this comes from an independent lab study that follows the latest Chinese KDAR standard. Now I did reach out to Philips to ask them more detail on this KDAR study, but they said they couldn't give me any more details. Now we can compare this KDAR score with other devices we've tested to get an estimate of what we would expect this to do in our test room. So we expect it to be quicker than the Lavoit Core 400S, which completed our test in 22 minutes, but be slower than the Lavoit Core 600S, which completed our test in 15 minutes. Whilst the Philips 3000i is a very large unit, it does have some interesting design features. Now, one minor niggle that I had with it was its lack of handles. So on the back of the device, you have this lip area that you can lift but it's not so easy to use and it's actually you're just better off just grabbing your hands and moving it and I think that's really challenging especially compared to a device like the Lavoie Core 600S which has two very clear handles that just makes it easier to move around. Now it's a cylindrical design so it means the pollutant air is from all around this side and then the clean air comes from the top of the device. One big standout feature that you can see straight away is this use of fabric at the top and it really does make it stand out is a good Good looking device thanks to that. It's similar to the Blue Air devices that use the fabric pre-filter. Now at the top of the device you have a glass-like screen which has a LED that changed different colors from blue, purple to red to tell you how much your air is pollutant and then you have multiple options on board. So you can see on, on board you can see how much filter life you've got left, see the level of PM 2.5 and VOCs and adjust the speed. You have the automatic mode, you also have the option for night mode which puts into automatic and switches the lights off. Talking about the app, you do have the option to schedule, but the schedule options are pretty basic. So you can say when you want to switch the device on, but you can't say when you want to switch it off. 
And I just thought that was really strange because it seems like a really basic thing. You want it to switch on at a certain time and then you want to switch it on to another time. So I also wanted to be able to use the Philips Hue app to control this device as it's a, you know, another Philips device. But doing research, I found out that the Philips Hue division has actually been sold off as another division. So they're actually now separate companies. So any hope I think of having the Philips Hue talking to the Philips air purifier is unlikely to happen. Now there was a minor thing as well that I noticed inside the app they have a section called articles and they had an article about does having plants in my house help against air impurities and the answer was that yes plants can help according to a NASA study they can really help to improve the air in your home. The problem is, is this has been debunked for many, many years. We've talked about it on our website, but there's tons of publishers. And the reality is that you can get a few plants, but it isn't gonna change the air quality in your room. And it's just strange that they didn't do that level of research, considering that these articles are on every customer who has this app. Let's jump into the exciting part and test the Philips 3000i in our test room. Now we tested this device in the same room that we've tested over 80 different air purifiers. It's in a room of 728 cubic feet and we light incense smoke and then track the levels of PM1, PM2.5 and PM10 with two purple air sensors. Now the results for the Philips 3000i, it managed to clean all PM1 pollutants in 18 minutes, which is right what we'd expect with the K that Philips reported. As this device is available in the UK, I wanted to compare its performance with other devices that are in the UK. As you can see from the table, the Philips 3000i was able to clean our test room quickly. But when comparing price to many of these other units, at its RRP, it really is much higher price for the level of performance you can get with other brands. The other thing that's really important is the level of sound that it generates, which is why we use a sound meter at three feet away to see how much sound each device gives off at each of its fan speeds. And here are the results for the Philips 3000i. I also compared the sound level of this device running at its top speed compared to other devices that you can buy in the UK. So as you can see from the table, at its highest fan speed, this really aligns with many of the other devices that we've seen. The benefit of choosing a large KDAR device like the Philips 3000i is that you don't have to use it at its highest fan speed. Speed two for the Philips 3000i hits 45.8 decibels. Now this matches up with the 45 decibel limit that the Clean Air Stars tool says for a loud classroom or a loud office. So this really is a fan speed you could have running in the background. When comparing performance at this lower fan speed, this device is beaten by the Luggable XL, which is a PC fan DIY kit that we've tested, and the large Smart Air Blast Mini Mark II and the Lavoie Everest Air. Now it was one minute faster at cleaning our test room than the Lavoie Core 600S. Another thing to consider when looking at an air purifier is the amount of energy that it uses, which is why we record the amount of energy that it's used at each fan speed. And these are results for the Philips 3000i. So considering that this has such a high KDAR, the energy efficiency is really high. So we can assume that the fan motor in this is a really efficient device. If you had to leave this device running 24-7, 365 days a year, and assuming American energy prices, this would add an additional $55.93 to your electricity bill. Looking at the table, as expected, this device is really beaten by the PC fan DIY kits, which are really energy efficient compared to HEPA retail devices. We can also look at the amount of energy that's used at speed two, a sound level that you're more likely to use day to day. Looking at the table, when we account for energy usage at the lower fan speeds, this device is still more energy intensive than the Everest Air Core 600S, WinX Zero SE, and the Luggable XL. But it is faster than cleaning our test room than the Core 600S and the WinX Zero SE. Now in comparison, the Smart Blast Mini Mark II is uses a lot more energy, but it can clean our test room much quicker. So what about the filters in the Philips 3000i? So we can open up the device and have a look at the filters ourselves. but I also wanted to use some of the marketing material that's on the website. So they define this filter as Nano Protect HEPA, and they mention a figure a number of times in their marketing material. They say that this filter can block 99.97% of particles as small as 0.003 microns. 
But the problem is, is this isn't unique to this Philips filter. Most HEPA grade filters are given at a percentage of single pass filtration for particle size 0.3 microns. And the reason the companies share their 0.3 microns is these particles are the hardest to stop by a filter like this. Now, Joey Fox wrote a really good blog post if you want to learn more about the science behind this. But I also reached out to another manufacturer. This is what uh, Smart Air told me. I'm just going to read it out. Philips is making what sounds like a bold claim when they say that their filters capture 99.97% of particles at 0.003 microns. But the reality is, is that every filter can do this. Data from NASA and researchers at the University of Minnesota shows that even furnace filters, so HVAC filters, capture 99.99% of particles 0.003 micron particles size. Marketing departments of big air purifier companies love to use this misconception to lure air breathers into thinking that their products are better. Don't be fooled by this marketing claim. Their data is clear. All filters, including Philips and Smart Air, capture these tiny particles. Now, I'll drop in the description, uh, they've written a blog post about it and the researcher, you can have a look for yourself. But if you've read my blog post at House Fresh, I really don't like when brands use the average consumer's misconceptions about air to make their products seem more unique to others. Similar to HEPA Silent used in the blue air purifiers, NanoProtect HEPA is likely a lower grade HEPA filtration than medical grade HEPA H13. And we can see this in some of the marketing materials on the Philips website. So Source 12 says, Philips air purifiers have higher clean air delivery rate and energy efficiency with a NanoProtect HEPA filter than with a HEPA H13 filter tested to GB slash T18801. I did reach out to Philips to ask them for more detail on the HEPA grade of their filter and they said the following. We don't use the claim of HEPA class. The reality is that lower HEPA grade filters will actually be more effective in an air purifier setting. We've seen this with devices like the Corsi Rosenhold box or the PC fan kit. They use MERV 13 filters, but actually can be quicker at cleaning the room when compared to HEPA grade filters. But it's just confusing the way that Philips presents this in their marketing materials. I believe that most consumers would think that this filter is somehow unique and better at catching tiny particles than your standard HEPA filter. This filter also contains activated carbon inside the device. And one of the things I always like to find out from manufacturers is how much carbon is in the device. Usually it's given in grams or sometimes with larger devices in pounds. But when I reached out to Philips, they said that the amount of carbon was proprietary and they couldn't tell me that. So at some point, just looking at the device, it's not a massive amount. Most of the filter is actually the particle filter, the NanoProtect HEPA on the outside. I mentioned in the introduction one of the things I didn't like, and that is that the pre-filter. So the pre-filter is this cover on the outside that's in front of the HEPA filter. So I'd estimate that you need to clean the pre-filter on this device every month. It might be longer, it depends on your situation, and it can be a bit of a pain to pull it out of the device, clean it, and in most cases, people just leave them. So I much prefer when you have a removable pre-filter, but we see this in other filters that use this cylindrical design. So this is the filter from the Lavoie Core 600S. It's similar size, so I think it's a good comparison, but you can see that it also uses this outside pre-filter that is slightly dirtier as we've been using this device. Now, what's strange uh, about this particular filter is that Philips say that you only need to change it every 36 months. Now, that might be true of the particle filter, and certainly we'll like to test that in our long-term testing, but I just can't see it being true for the carbon side inside. Now, I went on Amazon to look at some of the reviews as part of the, the research for this, and there are a number of people who had issues where within a few months, the carbon had stopped working, and even some users said that they tried to cut the carbon out so they could still use the particle filter, and they wish that Philips just sold a particle filter so that they could just use the particle filter and not worry about the carbon. So I just don't know how Philips has managed to create a filter that doesn't need changing. I could understand if it was just the particle filter like we saw with the Smart Blast Mini, but they have a separate carbon filter. However, we always do our calculations on long-term running costs based on what the manufacturers tell us. So for this device, the original OEM filters are 84 pounds and 99 pence. 
which equates to around $109.14. Now, as you only have to change these filters every 36 months, this means the yearly filter replacement cost for this device is £28.33p or $36.38. As you can see in the table, this device has some of the lowest running costs we've seen in a HEPA retail device. The only other device that has a cheaper cost of filter replacements and running costs is the Luggable XL, which is a PC fan kit which uses off-the-shelf 3M MERV 13 filters and has really low energy costs at its top fan speed. I also had a look to see if there was generic filters for this device on Amazon and they were they were around half the price of the OEM filters and interestingly they say on the description that you need to change these filters every 6 to 12 months. So I don't know, I'm, I'm super confused. <laughs> now if we take the 12 month figure this means that the filter, the total energy costs and filter costs for running this device is around $165, which is still less than what we see with many of the high KDAR devices we've tested. So, the Philips 3000i, is it worth it? Well, here in the UK, we don't have too many single units that have over 300 CFM. But at its RRP of 450 pounds, it's hard to make a case for this device because at that price range, you can get a device like the Smart Air Blast Mini Mark II, which has a massive KDAR of 435 CFM. However, if you're able to get it cheaper, like I was at £269, then this aligns with a device like the Lavoie Core 600S, which has similar air cleaning performance and similar features. I do think stating that the Philips 3000i filters will only need changing every three years won't match reality for most consumers because the carbon element of the filter will need replacing more often. I also don't like how Philips market this device as it could be confusing to many consumers trying to understand what is unique about this device compared to other units on the market. I'd say that the Philips 3000i is aiming at the higher end market with the likes of Dyson. So it's a good looking device. Now one thing to bear in mind when using the auto mode, when we were testing in our kitchen, when there were small levels of pollutants, it kicked in fine. But one issue I saw was when there was lots of pollutants, it didn't kick into its highest speed. So if you are using it in auto mode, you may want to adjust it to turbo mode manually. If you like the look of the Philips 3000i and want a single unit with high KDAR, then be sure to use a price alert tool like Camel Camel, because this device regularly goes for less than the £450 set at its RRP. Now, I really appreciate brands like Philips, well-known brands getting into the space of air purifiers, and I hope they continue to keep investing and innovating to create new units. I'm actually in the process of testing this smaller 800 series. And this device competes with devices like the Lavoie Core 300 or the Shark HP 102. It's much cheaper and I'm excited to see how it performs in our test. Now, as always, let me know in the comments if you have any questions, especially if you have the Philips 3000i and let me know how you're getting on.